What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Doing a head-to-head -head combat mode between the Cavalon French wine cask versus the Amru Oloroso sherry. Now, this bottle was a single cask that went exclusively to La Maison du Whiskey in France. I got this bottle in a trade. I acquired this bottle in Alberta. Uh, True Malters uh, provides Alberta with the single cask for this French wine cask. There was another one available to the Cavafan group. I have a sample of that one. I'm not gonna review that one because I don't have a full bottle of it. This one is 59.4% and basically goes for between four to $500 retail. This one is 60%, has 600 bottles made and was around 120 euro, which converts to about 200, just over $200 Canadian. That is the retail price. Obviously for secondary prices, it goes a little higher, which this will as well. Uh, I'm gonna nose them, taste them, give them a mark and tell you which brand in general, I think is doing a better job overall. Okay, so when I first got this whiskey, I was really disappointed. The nose was very muted. Uh, looking at the Cavalon right now, it was tasting a little off. There was an off-putting note to it, that sour oak note uh, that we refer to sometimes, almost borderline an ammonia note. It wasn't dominant, but it was definitely there. Uh, let's see how it is now after about a month of being open. So on the nose, definitely improved. It's less muted. This one, uh, there was big hype around it because the master distiller is leaving. He signed all the bottles. Um, there was this big unveil for this whiskey. I kind of knew the writing was on the wall that it was gonna be a disappointment because of the price, because of all the hype around it. I knew it was gonna be a really tough act to follow with the virgin oak. So uh, all those things in play, I was skeptical to say the least about this French wine cask but the nose definitely has improved. A lot of like jelly type fruits, like apricot jam, like a mango puree maybe. Cooked down oranges. Nice nose overall. On the palate. Yeah, so that sour oak, um, slightly off-putting note is still there. It's not quite ammonia heavy, uh, like I do find in some whiskeys that I absolutely can't stand, but it reminds me of that taste. And for that reason, it's not really where I want it to be. Uh, and I don't know if it'll ever get there because that's on the palate. It's not on the nose, but it's definitely on the palate. I'm gonna take a sip of water in between these because of how different they are. What I will say is there's very little burn despite being 59.4%. So pretty easy to drink at cast strength, which is nice. Again, to the Amru, which is exclusively aged in an Oloroso sherry cask. Uh, pretty dark, as you can see. This one, again, open for a month, but all the Amru goodness, that ginger gingerbread cookie kind of note comes through here. I thought that was exclusive to the rum cask, but then I revisited some Amroot since that. And this one has it, the Madeira cask has it. It's probably just a distillery characteristic. Nose is all dark fruit, chocolate, even coffee. Maybe some molasses in there as well, which is kind of strange. but strange in a good way. Lots of dark chocolate. A 
Again, do not have to add a drop of water to this, which is absolutely shocking. I wish I could buy more of this. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, I acquired this in a trade. Really good stuff, though. Lots of coffee. Good finish on it. Still tasting it now. Going to add a little bit of water to both of these, give them a quick taste, and then I'm going to give you guys a mark. Yeah, still prevalent on the palate as well. That pickle juice, actually I think that's probably the best way to describe this one because it's not quite uh, off-putting in the sense that it's like an ammonia taste, but it's you got to kind of like that pickle juice kind of flavor. I know some bourbon guys really like that in their um, bourbons, but <clears throat> to get that in a wine cask I find is a bit strange. But yeah. It's good. It's definitely good. Is it great? I don't think so. Is it overhyped? Absolutely. Okay. Unfortunately, the hype really brings this down and the price on this bottle really brings this down as well. The nose on this Amroot, and honestly, almost all Amroots, the nose is amazing. A little bit of cinnamon now, maybe some like Christmas spices, like nutmeg. allspice, that kind of thing. A little bit less on the chocolate side, more on the coffee side, got a little bit more um, drying. Really nice though still. I think I prefer it without water. Actually, I might prefer both of these without water. Maybe like a chocolate covered fig, like a dark chocolate covered fig. Interesting, really nice stuff. This one's a 90, easily. The Amrood is a 90. Um, really good stuff. I think the whiskey base score is telling, I believe it's above a 90 on whiskey base. And that's several people that have very different tastes marking this whiskey. This is a 90 for me, like I said. Really good stuff. You can only find it in France at La Maison du Whiskey. So um, if you're able to purchase from them, I highly recommend you do so. And... I think it's still a decent price retail. As for the Cavillon, the French wine, there was a lot of hype around this. Between four and five hundred dollars retail Canadian. So really expensive stuff. Does it warrant the price? I don't think so. Uh, unfortunately, I would rather go with the Vino Barrique. I'd rather go with the Portwood. I would rather go with the Virgin Oak, of course, because I think the Virgin Oak was a stellar uh, example of what Cavillon could do. This, unfortunately for me, is not, this is an 84. Uh, I was going to give it a little higher, but I go by the amount of times I tried something. And every time I tried this, it fluctuated. So the first time I tried it, I didn't like it at all. Went back to it, then I liked it a little bit more. Went back to it again, liked it a bit more. And then the next two times after that, I liked it a little less. So I think 84 is the, the most fair score for this whiskey. Not great whiskey. Not bad whiskey by any means. And I do think there's going to be a lot of people that really like this whiskey. But it's just not for me. And the price, unfortunately, is way too much for what you're getting. So because of that, unless you're a collector that wants something like this signed by the master distiller that's retiring or leaving anyway, um, it's not something that I'm interested in buying. I don't care about signatures on a bottle. I want to drink my bottles. Uh, so for me, this is just okay. Like I said, 84. I kind of want to talk about these two brands really quickly because I feel like one of them focuses far too much on marketing and that's the Cavalon. All right. They care too much about the prestige of the brand and not enough about what goes inside the whiskey. And despite being good for the most part, they have some really stellar stuff. What they're doing is they're pricing themselves into a range that you expect high quality all the time and they're not delivering high quality all the time. They deliver it most of the time. But when you're spending upwards of three to $500 on a bottle, you want it every single time. This was a miss for me. 
the Oloroso Solist was a miss for me. There's a few, okay? So uh, I think the rum cask was good, but not good enough for the price. I think uh, they have some excellent products like the Port, like the Vino Barrique. But again, those are all single casks, so quality varies between casks. Whereas Amrote seems to be producing, in my opinion, better whiskey at an affordable price. They're always half the price of a Cavallon. They're always high quality stuff. They have very similar climates. They're both really hot. They both age very quickly in the barrel. So because of those things, that's why I decided to compare these two. I wish that Cavallon would focus less on marketing, focus more on putting out a high quality product cut out the marketing so you don't have to charge so much for your bottles, in my opinion. Obviously, there are people that absolutely adore Cavallon. I'm not one of them, although I do adore Amru because I think they focus a lot less time on marketing and just bang out awesome products. Super affordable, super high quality stuff. I love the distillery characteristic. Obviously, this is extremely biased because I'm basing it on my own taste. Right? But I lean heavily towards Amru over Cavallon. And it's convenient for me as well because it's a lot cheaper to buy Amru than it is to buy Cavallon. Rant over. Maybe we'll delve a little bit further into these two in a podcast in the future. Alright guys, that's it for me. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notifications for when I do release a video. You can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can support this channel on Patreon. And you can check out our podcast on all sites where podcasts are available. Cheers.